Wow, EA, you guys done goofed. Let's talk about it. So the review scores for Anthem have started coming in, and it's not looking pretty. It was lower than I expected. I figured this game would probably hit the mid to high 70s with the Metacritic, but it definitely lowered my expectations now because it's got a 67 on Metacritic right now for the PC version, and OpenCritic has it at a 64, and it's just not looking good. We had reviews from various sites like GameSpot, which only gave it a 6 out of 10. Not a good start for a game that EA was really banking on being their big game of the year. Which, interestingly enough, apparently is no longer since we have Apex Legends, which has been killing it. It's been getting millions and millions of players and really good review scores and just getting a lot of praise. And it seems like that's really going to be the direction of things. And the thing is, as much as it pains me to say it, Anthem's failure will probably paint the direction of EA in a bad way. Now, you might think that maybe this means that they'll go back to making story-based content, like Bioware will go back to making big, epic, single-player, story-based games. And I don't know about that, because EA is going to look at the other side of the coin with Respawn's new game, Apex Legends, where it's raking in millions of new players every week, raking in tons of microtransaction money, I am sure, and is killing it on the Twitch charts, being the number one stream game basically ever since it came out. I don't think Fortnite even got back the number one spot after Apex Legends took it. So it's going to be kind of a sad to say tale for people that love single player RPGs like Dragon Age. I mean, we may still get another Dragon Age game, for example, but beyond that, it's going to really depend on how it sells. I mean, this new Dragon Age game has to really kill it for EA to really second guess this because they're looking at the free to play market. They see the sales success of games like Fortnite. That's why they approved Apex Legends. It was actually Respawn's idea. They came to EA about it. EA was the one that was kind of gun shy about it. But now that they see the results, you can bet that if any other studios in EA wants to do something like this, they're just going to sign off on it because they see the huge success that these kind of markets have. But let's go ahead and return the conversation back to Anthem because this is the game that a lot of people have been anticipating. And it may still be a really good game when it's all said and done, but. Review scores are based on when a game first is released, and since the game is being released February 22nd, 2019, or February 15th if you're playing through EA or Origin Access, that's what the review scores are going to reflect. Look at other games that have recently came out, like Sea of Thieves, games that have been designed on a model of constantly developing the game as it goes along. They're essentially releasing unfinished games that are subject to change. And whenever you have a thing like that, the review scores are going to be based on what the game state is in at that time. And a lot of these games, unfortunately, are not up to snuff compared to traditional AAA games because they are a work in progress. That's the idea behind it. They realize that in order to keep those games going, they need players to constantly come back to it. And in order to keep them coming back to it, they need to have a string of content constantly come up. And that's where their traditional review model is really going to hurt games like this and possibly hurt their sales. Because you have to realize that a lot of gamers are going to look at the review scores for Anthem. And they're like, eh, I don't know, I'll wait on the sale. That costs EA a lot of money whenever that happens. And that's their fault, of course, because it is their responsibility to ensure that the game is good in the first place. But I also fear that maybe because of this, because of the way review strategies work, that companies will try to make the game in a way to appease reviewers in a false manner, have them basically give it a false score, um, make them think it's a really good game as they play through it, and then it ends up not being the case. It seems like Bioware 
needs to learn this strategy from Bungie because if you look at the review scores between the first Destiny and the second one, the second one had a lot more critical acclaim. But if you look at the stats about the player numbers between the games, the player numbers dropped a lot quicker on Destiny 2 than it did 1. Now, I guess you could argue that maybe because it's the second go around, it wasn't fresh anymore. I guess I can see that, you know. People are going to be harder to keep interest in it. That's true as well. But at the end of the day, what matters is engaging the player bases so that you can make those DLC sales, microtransaction sales, and so on, because those are the actual basis for where the game makes money for these companies. And, you know, because these games are really expensive to operate, and they're not going to be able to make money just solely off selling the game alone. That's why all these games have microtransactions. Um... If another great example, a game that gets a lot of praise is Warframe. Warframe is considered like one of the best games of that genre. People constantly talk up about it and it's getting new players every day, but it wasn't reviewed well at first either. If you look at the review scores on Metacritic, which again are based on when the game originally came out, it was in the low 60s, just like Anthem, but now it's considered a much better game. So I think that that certainly can be something that can happen for Anthem. I certainly think that Bioware could essentially crawl it out of its uh, depth that it's in right now and ascend it into a much higher area. But whenever people look at review scores, they're going to see, yeah, Anthem kind of sucks. And maybe they'll just move on and not even give it a chance. So it's kind of a slippery slope. It really is because the shape of way games are being developed is changing drastically. And reviews really haven't and that could be a good or bad thing depending on how you look at it because judging a game like anthem at launch versus say six months a year three years from now are two completely different things because a lot of things can change outside of the core fundamentals of the gameplay and so that's something you have to consider but if you're looking forward to anthem you know, make your call. Make your call on if you still want to get it. I wouldn't just go based off the review scores. I would review, read a couple of the reviews, watch a couple of video reviews, and have them actually explain the reasons why they give the score that they do. Because some things will bother people, some things will not. And at the end of the day, that's what's really going to be important. You know, it's going to be important, like, if you don't mind certain things like grinding and uh, repetitive quests and things like that you know if you get enjoyment out of that stuff because you're playing with your friends and you're wanting to get that next loot and whatever you know maybe it'll be the game for you and if these things suck for you well that kind of sucks too and one of the things that this game's getting criticized a lot about is it lacks a lot of the bioware storyline you know because one of the things that bioware games have gotten a lot of praise over are their stories and hopefully ea and bioware can work on that to possibly appease fans but i don't know let, let me know what you guys think are you still interested in getting anthem is this gonna sour you from it do you think you'll wait on a sale or something like that wait and see what just the average joe says about it which are they already playing it so you know their opinions seem to be in line with critics from what i've seen so yeah but let me know what you guys think and until then down phoenix out